I'm Mary Lloyd Ireland, University of Kentucky, and this is the way I like knee arthroscopy set up to be. It's important to have a routine and create a home court advantage in your operating room, and this is the first way to do that, setting the case up correctly. This is done under a general LMA anesthesia. Tourniquet is applied as high on the upper thigh as possible. I use a Lanny Johnson leg holder. You can see this is at the, the base of the break of the table, just above the break of the table. The patient is down far enough. I exsanguinate the limb, put the tourniquet up before we put the leg holder on because the leg holder acts as a tourniquet. Scrub Tech is elevating the tourniquet, and there's plenty of room to do the procedure. So this is what it looks like. Basically, you want the knee to be down. Top of the patella needs to be about five finger breaths below the leg holder. So oftentimes, you have to adjust the position of the patient on the bed. The only reason to have it up higher with more room above the patella would be if you're removing multiple loose bodies or doing patellofemoral work. The reason we want it low down, particularly in a varus knee, is that if you don't have it five finger breaths, it'll be hard to open up your medial compartment into valgus because of the lever arm. This is applying the soft foam cushion goes around the leg we'll check to make sure we like the position again sometime a little higher up if you're going to have to do a super patellar portal or patellofemoral work you want it pretty low five finger breaths if you have a varus alignment because it'll be difficult to get into valgus enough to not injure the articular cartilage of the medial compartment And then the leg holder is tightened, the bar placed. And you see how we still have a little bit of room. Sometimes patients come in complaining of bruising around this leg holder. It needs to be tight enough to provide the clamp effect, but not too tight to cause a lot of bruising. The well leg has a pad beneath the thigh all the way down to the foot. And then we drop the base of the table, foot of the table, to 90. This is the prep that's done. And now we've got the table dropped down. You can see the position of the leg there. Got to have that leg holder all the way down on the bottom of the table and put your tourniquet up first, then put the leg holder on. The portals are very key. I make my portals at 30 degrees of flexion. If you make them at a different degree of flexion, you just have to put the scope or the cannulas back in in that degree of flexion because the skin will move on the underlying structures. So at 30 degrees of flexion, the landmarks are the inferior pole of the patella and just lateral to the patellar tendon. Typically, the lateral portal is about a centimeter superior to the medial portal, which is made under direct visualization. So now the scope is in. I use horizontal incisions. So go ahead and make an incision through the capsule. Do a routine arthroscopy, putting the big 5-5 cannula up underneath the patella, sweeping down. You have to be able to manage the scope with one hand, manipulating the light cord with your fingers and holding the scope as ergonomically as possible. The medial portal is made under direct visualization with an 18 gauge needle and then an 11 blade. You can see where we have the mayo on the center part of the table and also our screen is also at the center part of the table over the patient. Now we've made the medial portal again under direct visualization look at the 18 gauge needle and then make this portal big enough where 
you have some water coming out because patients oftentimes will have pain over the medial portal if it's made small and you can't get the instruments back and forth. So most of the instrumentation is done through the medial portal and if you make it too small that will cause the synovium to get very upset, thickened, and the patients have medial pain. You can see in the upper right that's our scope picture and he's got the medial compartment open enough where there is no damage from the scope on the articular cartilage of the medial femoral condyle. You have to change the degree of valgus force that you apply and sometimes the degree of flexion and extension. And this is where arthroscopy of the knee becomes a coordination game where you have to make sure you don't put too much tension and pop an MCL, but you have to put enough, enough tension or valgus stress so that there is opening in that medial compartment so you can do the work that you need to do. Most of the time the meniscal pathology is in the back of the knee so we have to open it up enough to be able to get back to that posterior third of the meniscus medially. This shows as we're proceeding. I like to do the pressure this way putting the foot on my upper thigh. I have a step up so my foot is up on a step and then I can easily change the flexion extension of the knee and manipulate the knee to do the procedure. So the scope is still lateral. Sometimes you can cheat and see where the scope's looking uh, by the skin, the light reflecting underneath the skin, so he's looking lateral there. And the knee goes into varus so you put it on your left leg on the left knee and go into varus. Again the scope in the lateral portal, see the probe there medially. Fluid is on the scope. If you have a read out, then for some reason you've lost your flow. Sometimes we forget to turn the flow on. There's that little stop right on the scope itself. So the scope is in my right hand. This is a left knee. Creating the medial portal under direct visualization. Looking directly at the needle. So the light cord is 180 degrees from the way it's looking. I have the assistant pull the needle out. I keep my eye on that direction and under direct visualization do a little mini capsulotomy. And I'm looking as the knife comes in, horizontal incision directly over the anterior horn of the medial meniscus just posterior to the fat pad. You can see how that working portal is a little lower than your scope portal. Portal placement is key. You're dead in the water if you don't get it in the right spot. There's the ACL. Now I'm going into the medial compartment. The scope can be switched to the medial compartment as here. And now the working portal is lateral. If you have to work in the lateral compartment, such as getting to the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus, switch your scope medial. If you need to get to the anterior horn of the medial meniscus, this is also the way that you do it because you can come in more perpendicular across the knee joint with your shaver or your biter to work on the anterior horn of the medial meniscus. So think about switching your portal depending on what your findings are. And then the closure, basically I don't put Vicryl or anything deep. Sometimes these will get red and spit sutures, so I put nylon, usually a mattress fashion, could be simple, and just reapproximate the skin. It's kind of nice to do a mattress if you have a lot of fluid leaking out of that medial portal. This just shows the suture 3 nylon typically. Don't have to make a lot of landmarks on the knee for a knee scope. You just need the inferior pole of the patella. Come just lateral to the patellar tendon at that level. 
And then again, the medial portal is usually about a centimeter lower. There are different techniques to do a meniscus repair. There's an inside out zone specific set that is needed to pass the sutures on an inside out. If you have a bucket handle tear of the meniscus, oftentimes you do a hybrid where you do all inside or inside out. The zone specific set is in the upper part of this. The lower part is the all inside. So this is what we used in this case as a hybrid posteriorly using the all inside and then inside out for the rest of the bucket handle tear, the anterior two thirds. This shows an inside out medial meniscus repair of a left knee. I have the scope medially. I put these sutures in from the lateral portal. You want to get perpendicular to any tissue that you're trying to repair so the angle is better if we come across lateral portal for this. These are the PDS inside out sutures in this bucket handle tear. I used all inside in the posterior horn and then these PDSs. So then we'll cut down medially and sew and tie these down to the capsule. This can be done in the leg holder as well. Thank you very much for your attention. A water buck in South Africa.